Hi guys, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Carmen. Welcome. So we're going to talk about in this video, what are the negative characteristics of number seven in numerology, but we're also going to talk about the positive characteristics too. So we're talking about the good and the bad of number seven in this video. But before we do that, if you are excited to watch this video today, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to book a reading with me, I will leave the information to that below in the description box. So let's get into it. What is the dark side of number seven in numerology? Let's find out. So all numbers in numerology are ruled by part of our solar system and number seven is ruled by the planet Neptune. So all numbers fall on a spectrum. On one end is the positive side, on the other end is the negative side. On some days you can have all of the negative qualities, on other days you can have all of the positive qualities, or you can have some of the negative qualities and some of the positive qualities. So you can fall anywhere on the spectrum with this number. So let's talk about the positive qualities of the number seven first. So the first thing is that seven is a very intellectual number. So this number is very intellectual and very wise. It has a lot of knowledge. So this number can use its brain and its thinking on a level that all the other numbers are not able to do so. People with this number can become scientists, they can become researchers, they can become all kinds of things that require mental abilities and require a greater intellectual level. So they have that great intellectual ability and they're also very wise. This number tends to be in its head a lot of the time thinking about things and going over things in its mind. It's a very deep thinking number. It will not be satisfied with just a simple explanation. It wants to analyze things on a deeper level and try to understand things for why exactly they are happening. And so because of this, they tend to be very introspective and introverted. So sometimes there's more going on in their head than they're willing to talk about. And they're very observant, so they observe everything. They're kind of like little scientists, gathering information and data, and just constantly observing the world around them. And so they are very analytical also. They have really good reasoning skills, and they can analyze things, and they can see all of the dimensions and all of the sides of things. They can see the good, and they can see the bad in everything, because they have very sharp analytical skills. And because of these great analytical skills, they also make really good psychologists. And they can really analyze people and diagnose people and to help people figure out why exactly they're doing what they're doing. So they're very analytical, really good reasoning skills. They're not happy with just a surface answer. They want to know the real reason why something is happening and they will go deep within their mind to pull out that answer. And because of this, they are visionaries. They can visualize things that other people cannot see. They have great imaginations and they can imagine things that other people cannot foresee. So a lot of visionaries throughout our time tend to be this number. People that um, were able to visualize things that didn't even exist. They were able to visualize these things with great imagination skills and bring them into fruition because of their imaginations and their visionary minds. So like a great example of this would be Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a life path number seven, and he was able to visualize a car that didn't exist, a computerized car that was unlike any other car um, at the time. He was able to visualize this car and bring it into fruition, almost as if he was seeing into the future of what cars would be like in the future. He had those visionary skills and also the skills to be able to do all the research and science behind the car in order to make it happen and in order to bring it into fruition. Now, and this is something that separates the seven from the one and the five, because one and fives are like sevens where they're very mental and they tend to be in their head a lot of the time, and they're also visionaries. But unlike the one and the five, the seven actually has the intellectual abilities to actually make it happen, whereas the one and the five don't always have as much of that intellectual ability as the seven does. This number also tends to be very open-minded. So this number, they can think outside of the box, kind of like the number one and also the number five. So number one, five, and seven have this in common, this great ability to think outside of the box 
But to not accept what is given to us and to not accept what society considers to be the standard. They can think outside of the box unlike other people can and they can they can see the future in many ways because of this and they can see things that other people cannot see so they are very very open-minded people and because of this they are open to other ideas and they are open to new suggestions and they're very rational people and they can see that all things in the universe are possible and all things that other people say are also possible and so this makes them very open-minded and as I had mentioned before, a lot of times people with this number can see into the future and they are visionaries and this is a very psychic ability that they have. So this number tends to be very psychic on many levels. Sometimes in some situations can read other people's thoughts, can read other people's minds. That's very common with this number. And so one of the psychic abilities that sevens often have that they don't even realize they have is clear cognizance, which is clear thinking. So often spirit guides and guardian angels will be downloading information into their head and random thoughts will just pop into, into their head and it's not their thinking. A lot of times it's their spirit guides and guardian angels that are giving them these thoughts and giving them these ideas and putting them in their head and they will just have like a clear way of thinking and a clear way of knowing so they'll just know something and they don't always know exactly why but they just know it and they just have this information put into their head and they don't even realize it but a lot of times this is clear cognizance and it's information that is being given to them and so also somebody who is on the positive end of this number is a very spiritual person. They have found something that is greater than themselves and greater than, you know, their beliefs and something to believe in. And, and so it can be a very spiritual number on many, many levels. And, and that's another common thing for people with this number to be as well. Um, spiritual leaders and spiritual teachers or people that are religious in the religious fields like um, priests. There's a very spiritual aspect to this number because this number is really good at introspection and it's really good at going within and tuning out the outside world and just focusing on what is happening inside of them and what is happening in their world. And they can connect to spirit. They can connect to God because of this. They have this ability to connect to the spiritual world and to connect to God because they have this great ability to go within. And on the positive end of the number, a lot of sevens are really into meditation. They are very introspective. This is a very introspective number. So because of its great ability to use its mind and go within and kind of tune out the rest of the world, this number tends to be on the academic intellectual side or on the spiritual side or both. So you can have a person that is both of those things also. But the common thread between a seven who is a scientist and a seven who is a spiritual leader and teacher, the common thread between these two is that they have the ability to go within, be introspective, and kind of tune out the rest of the world. It can also be a very inquisitive number. So if you give this number a simple reason and a simple explanation, that's not going to be enough for this number. This number wants to know the real reason why something is happening. It wants to know the truth behind it. This is a number that will ask questions and is very curious and is exploring the universe. They're exploring the world. So they are explorers, but they're explorers on the inside. They're going within their own minds and they are thinking about things and they are exploring the universe from within themselves. So this is an exploring number. So it has that in common with the five. As I had mentioned with the five, the five is the explorer of the outside world and the outside environment. The seven is also an explorer as well, but they're an explorer of the internal world and what's going on within them and in their mind. But fives need the external environment to provide this mental stimulation. And sevens can provide this mental stimulation on their own by going within their own mind. And so because of this, a lot of times they make really good writers also. Um, writing is something that is very therapeutic for people with the number seven and they can be very very good at it. Another thing with the number seven is that this is a very mysterious number. So these people that have this number they're very mysterious and they can be very elusive and that's because sevens tend to be very private 
And because it is a very private number, we don't always see all of the aspects of this number. People with this number are not always very open. They can be very private, not showing people everything that's going on in their lives. And this makes this number very mysterious and it can be very elusive. And because of this, people can become very obsessed with people who have this number because people that have this number have this mysterious, elusive quality to them. And people just can't figure them out exactly. So people can't figure them out and they wanna know more about them. And people can become really obsessed with number sevens. Fives and sevens can have this in common where people become very obsessed with them and wanting to know more. But especially the number seven, because the seven is so mysterious and so elusive. And we're not really seeing all of the sides of the seven. The seven will only show you what they want you to see, but they're not gonna show you everything because there's a part of them that they want to keep private. And so a good example of this is Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe was a life path number seven and she was a very mysterious, elusive person that a lot of people became very obsessed with. Another positive aspect of this number is it's a very independent number. So this number can take care of itself. It knows how to take care of itself, can be very independent, not always needing other people. So on the positive end of this number, you have a number that is very unusual and is not a boring number. There's always gonna be something going on in their mind. They're always thinking of something new. When they do choose to let other people into their lives and to communicate with other people, they're always gonna have something to talk about with other people because they have so much going on in their mind. People will always find them to be very interesting. And also on the positive end of this number, you have a person that is not materialistic. So sevens are not concerned with the material world. They are focused more on the spiritual world and they are focused more on the intellectual world. And they're not as concerned with um, material things and they're not as concerned with having money making jobs or um, jobs that kind of impress other people. That's not important to them. So this is a very non-materialistic number. And the last positive thing that I wanted to say about this number is that sevens that are on the more spiritual end of the number and have kind of gone through the awakening process, they are a huge gift to people that have them in their lives. They bring so much wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Um, they can really change people's lives and transform people's lives on a whole different level. And so the people that have them in their lives don't even realize how lucky they are in some situations. And what a gift it is to have someone around them with so much wisdom and spiritual understanding. So sevens can really change and transform other people's lives. And a lot of times they don't even realize this. So now we're gonna talk about the negative side of number seven. And not all sevens have these negative qualities. So some days you might have all the negative qualities and other days you might have all the positive qualities or you might have just a few of the negative and a few of the positive qualities. So you can fall anywhere on this spectrum. So the first thing on the negative side of this number is that it tends to be very reserved. Because having a lot of space and a lot of time alone by itself in order to think about things, is so important to them and really if they don't have that space and that ability to be able to think about things then they will not be happy this will not be a happy number but because they need that time alone to do their deep thinking and to have introspection they tend to be very reserved and they also tend to be very private so there are many aspects of the seven that the seven will not share with other people the seven will only share certain parts of itself with other people and a lot of itself it tries to keep private and so this comes off as being very reserved to other people. This can also come off as being very aloof and very distant to people. So people often feel like they don't really know the seven or they feel like the seven is very distant and very far away from them and they really don't know the seven as much as they would like to. So sometimes they can come off as being distant and aloof. On the negative side, they also can be isolated and they can be loners. So like I said, because they need that time alone to think about things and to have introspection, they do tend to isolate themselves a little bit more than the other numbers do. 
So on the far end of the negative side of this number, you have a number that is very isolated and has cut itself off from a lot of people and doesn't really have a lot of relationships with other people. And the thing is, the seven doesn't really need to have a lot of relationships with other people. So it doesn't need to have as many relationships as the other numbers do. That's not as important for the seven because the seven really is here to kind of understand themselves and to have that time alone. So relationships aren't going to be as important to the number seven as they are to other numbers. So typically what you'll see with sevens is that they will have a few close, really good friends that really know them really well instead of millions of acquaintances that barely even know them. And often this can cause a dichotomy within sevens because sevens are very dreamy and they like to dream about having love and finding love. But um, because of their need for um, alone time, um, it's like they want love, but at the same time, they don't want to find love. So, <laughs> so sometimes they will want to be with someone, but at the same time, they don't. So it's this dichotomy within them. Also, on the negative end of this number, you have a number that is very cynical and very skeptical. So if a seven hasn't found its spiritual basis and something to believe in that's greater than itself, something greater than itself to believe in, whether that be God or something else, then a lot of times they will become cynical and they will become very, you know, very cynical about life, very cynical about why we are here, that there's no point of us being here, that there's no purpose. Um, cynical about other people's motivations and sincerity. They can be very skeptical of other people's motivations and sincerity. And this can also lead to being very distrustful and very paranoid. So a lot of times with this number, you will either see somebody that is very spiritual and has faith in a higher power, or you will see a person who is very cynical about life. And often a lot of atheists um, have this number on the other end of this number. So they will often be the most spiritual or religious people that you will ever meet, or they will be the least spiritual or religious people that you will ever meet. Also, a lot of the cynicism and skepticism can lead to a lot of distrust and paranoia. So sevens on the negative end can be very distrustful of other people and very distrustful of their motivations and their intentions. And the truth is, some sevens on the negative end are distrustful of themselves so they don't completely trust themselves and so that gets projected out onto other people and so they can become very distrustful of other people and very paranoid in some situations where they think everybody is out to get them and everybody wants to hurt them and everybody wants to harm them or everybody has bad intentions for them also on the negative end of this number you have somebody who is very obsessive with their thoughts especially. So like I said, sevens like to think about things. That's very important to them. Sometimes this can become so severe that they become obsessive with their thoughts and bad thoughts keep occurring in their mind over and over and over again. And we can see this as rumination where they're ruminating about things that have happened to them in the past and they can't get over these things that have happened to them and they keep thinking about it over and over again and what ends up happening is because they are thinking about those negative things that have happened to them in the past they end up attracting more negativity into their lives and more negative experiences into their lives because there's this thought pattern and the cycle that's going on within them and it's like a vicious cycle that they can't get out of sometimes because of these obsessive thoughts that some of them have. And because of this, a lot of times on the negative side of this number, you have a number that becomes very depressed and becomes very pessimistic. So if they can't stop thinking about certain things that have happened to them before in the past or certain events, a lot of times this will attract more negativity into their lives. And these obsessive thoughts that they have in this rumination often will cause depression and pessimism where they feel like the world is a negative place and negative things keep happening to them. But because they keep thinking about these thoughts over and over again, these negative events keep happening to them over and over again. So they keep pulling them into their world 
they keep pulling them into their reality and so they become even more pessimistic and they become even more depressed and it's a vicious cycle also on the negative end of this number you have somebody who is very critical and is a constant complainer so complaining about everything criticizing people criticizing everything and just complaining about everything and complaining about life if they're experiencing depression and going through a pessimistic state in their life a lot of times they will start to focus on the negativity and they will become constant complainers and critics and I didn't write this down, but sometimes sevens can be perfectionists too. So they want things to be perfect and they have a level of expectations when it comes to how things are done and they like things to be perfect um, sometimes. Also, sevens have very sharp thinking, but they also have a very sharp tongue. And if they feel like somebody has done something to hurt them or said something to hurt them, then they will lash out at that person and they can have a very lethal tongue that will say things to really hurt another person's feelings and really cut another person. If you look at the way the seven looks, it looks like a very sharp number. It doesn't have curves like some of the other numbers do. So it looks very sharp and that's kind of the way it is. And lastly, the last negative attribute of this number is that it can sometimes be odd and it can sometimes be very awkward. Like I said, sevens on the more negative side of the number can at times isolate themselves from other people. And if they do this too much, then they will isolate themselves to the point where they become awkward around other people, socially awkward, and other people will see them as being kind of odd. Not really knowing how to fit in with other people and other people will see them as being like they don't really fit in. And sometimes if it's on the very far end of this number, you have a person that comes off as being like they're autistic and seeming like they're on the autistic spectrum. And the last negative quality of this number is that sometimes this number is not always good at putting their dreams into action. So they will come up with these great dreams and they're really good at thinking about things and visualizing things, but they're not always good at taking the action in order to make those dreams a reality. But all in all, this is such an intelligent number with so much wisdom. Like I said, anybody that has a seven in their life is so lucky because they really are a gift. They bring so much understanding and awareness and they can really change and transform people's lives completely. So we need the seven energy in this world. And as we enter the age of Aquarius, you will start to see more of the seven energy around you. We live in a world where more of the materialistic energy is kind of put on a pedestal. And as we enter this new era, the qualities of the seven will be put on a pedestal. And we will start to see more of these qualities um, really sought after with people. People wanting to become more psychic and people becoming more psychic and having more spiritual understanding. So the seven energy is going to become really, really big in the next 20 to 40 years. So sevens, we need you. We love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing and we would never survive in this world without you. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the negatives and positives of number seven. Do any of these characteristics resonate with you, the good or the bad? Can you identify with any of these characteristics? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to check out my services, I will leave the information to that below in the description box. I would love to have you subscribe and to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today. I am sending you light and love. Take care.